Hello, everybody. This is Juan Carlos Brando. Thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, we're uh, with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has over 45 years of experience working on the immigration field. Uh, hello, Ms. Wong. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having us, Ms. Wong. And well, we are uh, today on June the 23rd or the 20th, yeah, the 23rd of June. And it's actually um, a good time when we are uh, trying to find out the best way to go in the immigration field. And especially when we have uncertainty uh, among other areas of the law, other areas of the uh, economy in the country. Uh, but how are you feeling the, this uh, political environment regarding to immigration right now? I, I think things could be better, but definitely is a lot better than a few years ago. We just have to stick with the program. One new thing I've been learning is I'm getting a lot of client calls or, you know, or different clients calls about, should we dismiss the case? They heard that because as there's so many people coming in from the South, which is true, that um, that Biden's going to take away the asylum program and everybody who's on asylum now will be deported or on other, you know, anybody who's in court will be, which is absolutely not true. And I'm so glad we have this space time with our audiences to explain this. So each case is different. So for example, I met with, I talked to someone, not met, who, who lives in California this morning, that uh, they have an asylum holding, they also have a 10 year cancellation. And then the child came to America last year. So they were talking about, wow, since they, they have another child coming, will they be deported? Because rumor is that, um, all asylum cases, all 42 vacant cases will be deported. The hearing is not till two years later. So I, I advise them, please don't dismiss now. You never work from fear. You work from strength. And it's a Peter's principle. Never work with fear. They were so worried about deported. And also there's a new child coming into America that's 14 years old. And um so I advise them because the hearing is so long, at least there will be hopefully new laws coming in because if the case is still in court, they can protect all the benefits. The most important of which is they protect that work permit. Since they live in California, they get driver's license anyway. They already have a social, so they don't really care too much about the work permit. Timing is everything in the immigration law. I mean, just like in music and producing a movie, um, anything you do, timing. So in that case, I don't, a person don't think we should dismiss, even though the new law is here, then you could dismiss. It doesn't mean that 1.5 million cases that's in immigration court should be or could be or could be dismissed. Another issue is in Cleveland, Ohio, our judges terminate cases, but in most of the other jurisdictions, our judges don't terminate cases, but they may admin close because of this new situation. So don't just say, oh, because our judges terminate cases, I should terminate because then I don't have to go to court. I'm scared. I'm scared. As I say, never work with fear. You work with strength. So um, just because you have a you could now terminate or dismiss. I'm not saying we should or do it now, wait. Um, you always think a problem through. For example, I have another case yesterday. Oh my gosh, I've started with them since 2016. She got the green card and was very happy. She got her, she filed for her own citizenship. I was not involved at that time. It turned out citizenship was denied because they think that marriage was phony. It happens all the time under Trump. So immigration put her in removal proceeding. So that's when she came to us. So she filed the I-130 in 2016 because she only, she still have three kids back home in Honduras. So we're still waiting. But in the meantime, we just dismiss her uh, removal case, her court case, her deportation case, which means that she kept her old green card. She can now travel. And that's the right decision. 
So now, in that case, absolutely, we should dismiss the case, and we did. When new law came in on April 25th, she's one of my first clients I dismissed. Now she could travel. She's very happy. We just talked again yesterday and said, now, now that the case is dismissed, now she can travel again. Now that she's not on the radar for removal, we need the kids to be here. In the meantime, the kids are already 25 years old, 23 years old, and 20 years old, because since 2016, we have a case pending uh, six years ago. So what we decided to do on that case is she absolutely need to check the CAM program. She's from Honduras. She has a green card. The green card is taken for a long time. So maybe, maybe not, because CAM is for more for children under 21. But at that time, CAM program didn't come back because uh, Trump took it off. Obama started it and took it, I mean, when Trump came and took it off, and uh, now uh, Biden is starting it. So she's going to check in the CAM program. We're going to keep fighting for the I-130. The whole thing about it's not fair because she has her green card. Now her kids cannot come because they think her green card is fraudulently obtained. So these are cases where correctly we should have uh, dismissed it. It should not even have been filed because the poor girl, you know? So, um, so I'm just giving you examples of different cases. Who do you want to dismiss? Who do you want to terminate? Who do you want to admin close? On no dismissal, no admin close. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your answer. And don't forget that the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has over 45 years of experience working on the immigration field and has nine offices in the United States, uh, helping a lot of people in Atlanta, Chicago, Cleveland, Columbus, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. We just received this question through our uh, inbox, Ms. Wong. And this is uh, a person who is interested in knowing the following uh, hi, Juan and Margaret. Hope you are well. I'm a client, and I just want to say thank you in advance for all you do for this Q&A uh, live, which are beneficial, especially for those uh, uh, of not currently in the United States. I just realized that my petition, uh, which was filed by my mom, is coming up to five years in August. The last government presented lots of obstacles, and along came COVID. I understood the way uh, to be two years at uh, first, then four years, five years now. I am the, in the United Kingdom. Is there anything yes. that I can do? Thank you. Uh, I don't know who you are, but please do send us an email or text us because if you text us, we have caseworkers who check each text and go back to the same caseworker. But it seemed like everything is done on your case where they gave them the three year tax return, a one year tax return. DS 260 is, is filed. We're just waiting for visa call. The whole world, especially Mexico, actually, UK is better than Mexico, um, but it also depends on your local UK born person because suke also treats third country uk nationals as like uh, they treat us like third country nationals so um it seemed like uh we already updated your ds260 we're just waiting for the interview um normally we go to a congress person or senator person and we push for the hearing and that's good but now most of them are involved in the afghanistan and the ukrainian situation 95 percent of afghanistan's are denied anyway on those parole cases so um let me know who you are i will uh, again push for the interview right now because of virus and also because trump like fired more than 200 people who really green cards even though you're overseas you go through u.s department of state but green cards actually are all approved by homeland security so you need the homeland security officials to work together with u.s uh, dos department of state people to approve it trump fired a lot of these foreign um um, American officials uh, that's in foreign land. So right now they're just having a shortage. Um, but let me know, I'll push the case again for you. Right now, especially China, Mexico, not so bad. Europe is not as bad, but uh, El Salvador is also not that bad. But some countries, Korea, they're really not opening. 
for tourist visa or for green cards. They're really only opening for student visas or for some emergency cases. And I'm really sorry about that. But if that's the case, I'll keep pushing for you. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, I may send a message with the name of this person um, that is in the inbox for some reason. They don't, they don't want their name to show up. Um, we totally understand. So thank you so much. Um, I will give you more information about it. Uh, but um, to this person, just uh, give us a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984. Ask for your case worker who are who you are mentioning in the next comment, and she will be able to answer your call and give you the information you need. Thank you so much. Um, the next question is: Hello, good afternoon. I would like to ask uh, a question. I want to separate from my partner, but he does not agree to let me take my son. So I would like to know what I can do to be able to take him uh, with me and not have any problem with it? Uh, this is a divorce question because you're not married to him. I don't even know if his name is on the birth certificate. You know, you may want to go to, in Ohio, it's called a juvenile court to have custody. It's a custody issue. It's not an immigration question. You may want to talk to a custody lawyer or family or divorce lawyer because you're not even married to him. It's a matter of custody and make him pay child support. Okay, thank you so Sorry. much as well yeah. for this answer. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Uh, the next question is, uh, hi, Mrs. Wong. I am citizen of the United States. My brother came through the border and was paroled in on a credible fear interview. He filed asylum, but since I am a citizen, what can I do for him? I uh, and would this be affected by the asylum or affect his yes. asylum? Uh, Thank you so much. We are from Venezuela. Yes, De uh, depends on how old the kid is. If your parents are living, I do recommend number one, you can file for the kid, but it'll take 15 years. But file the I 130, you don't need a lawyer. The second thing is sponsor your parents. It should take only nine months to get a green card. If your parents are already in US, then the parents can sponsor the kid who's under 21. As long as the kid is under 21, once the parents got green card, the kid should get, because uh, family 2A cases, uh, oh, your brother's 30 years old. So my brother, okay, so he's an adult. So file the I-130 for him, and it's too late to do your parents. Uh, that's all you can do. But maybe get, okay, he came illegally. So have the brother file asylum. I guess he's not under TPS because he's a new arrival. Because uh, as you know, Venezuelan who came last year can get TPS. But then I would just file the I-130. It would take 12 to 15 to 16 years, but it's better than nothing. Uh, Ms. Woman, in this case, um, this person is already in the United States. Uh, right. would, would it be good that he is already filing the asylum case? 100%. File another stuff uh, like the family petition at the meantime. Yes. And there's no conflict. I think he's more worried if he file asylum with filing an I 130 by the brother or the parents are getting a uh, green card in six months, which is excellent. So once the parents got green card, if he's single, you found, you found I 130 for family to B because he's over 21. It would take about six years to get green card. So make sure he doesn't marry. If he fells in love with a girl, try to live together, but they could have children, no problem. But don't get married. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. Um, okay, the next question is in Spanish, but I'll read it all the way in English. Um, hi, good afternoon. I live in Mexico, and my my wife has Mika or Mica. I am M-I-C-A. And she's in the United States. We have two kids. She's in California. And we would like to know if you can help us to do our documents for me and my children. Uh, your wife have Mika. It could be your wife have Daka, D-A-C-A. I don't know what Mika is. But if your wife have a green card, you should be able to come to America in less than three years or three and a half years. This green card spouse. They're very slow, but it's durable. So uh, my guess is your wife have DACA. Now, you are from Mexico. 
assuming you're from Honduras, that's a case for CAM, C-A-M. So with whatever receipt notice your wife have, a work permit your wife have, then the husband and the children can uh, connect with the American Embassy or local CAM program, and they should be able to parole in. Mexico have no program. So it depends on what situation your wife have or how did she get it, then you need to look at your situation. But if she only have DACA, she would not be able to help you, but she probably won't because she has two children with you. DACA kids have to come to America before June 15th of 07, which means that she probably could not have DACA. Yeah, Ms. Wong, I'm reading that MICA is my Migrant and Immigrant Community Action Project. It's a nonprofit resource center. So this could mean that this uh, that the wife of this person works in that project or that institution somehow. Yeah, it depends not so much on where you work. It depends on what visa you have. So if you can send us another email uh, and more power to you, and thanks for listening to us in Mexico, uh, let me know what visa your wife has or just a work permit. I'll tell you how to get here. Okay, thank you so much. Please don't forget that Ms. Wong has offices in nine cities of the United States, and she has been working on this field for over 45 years and she has helped thousands and thousands of families every single year. We, we have heard numbers about 4,000 families, 5,000 families in just one year. So uh, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for all the effort you do every day to help our people to, uh, uh, well, to, to keep working even if you are tired, even if you are sick, even if you are not feeling well. You keep just working for people. And thank you so much for all you do. Um, next question is, I am concerned about lottery emails. Lottery emails. If I haven't heard anything uh, from USCIS, what's next? I didn't get accepted in HIB lottery. And I would like to apply for H1B or HIB uh for next year. I, I have know, an I've Indian passport. Yeah, I have clients who didn't make the lottery for three or four years. It's sad. Um, and that's all Trump, uh, because years ago, before like Trump or Obama came in, uh, H1B, anybody can do H1B and it's year round. Now H1B lottery is only, you start in February and I feel very bad because you have to keep CPT, OBT, F1 and wait for that lottery. but. But that's why if you're from Mexico, um, Singapore, there's an E3, um, Mexico have a TN visa. If you're from a country that have E visa, like Korean have E visa, look for other visas. Or if not, keep publishing articles, you can do an O visa. But aside from that, you do have to wait for H1B. And I'm very sorry. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And this is another question that we have here. It says, um, hi, I have the 10-year uh, bar. Could I file documents now or we still don't have any changes? I haven't filed anything because I asked for my record uh, from immigration uh, caught me or picked me up and it was clean. There was no fingerprints, but I have the letter when I asked for my record and it was when they told me that if I wanted to file documents, I have to go out for 10 years. This is a case where you're probably talking about your FOIA, that you look for documents. FOIA did not show fingerprint like U.S. visit. Uh, normally, they have how many times your fingerprint. You may have gotten the wrong FOIA because the only times that you find fingerprint is in a CBP FOIA containing the 213 or the uh, U.S. visit for you showing how many fingerprints. Sometimes if it's an old uh, arrest, look at FBI, sometimes they give A number, sometimes they don't because you need that A number to check further into it. But you did say you have a, you have a piece of paper saying 10 years. It doesn't hurt to show your lawyer. If you don't have a lawyer, I don't mind looking at it for you. I can explain to you what that means. Um, 10 year bar merely means that at the time of crossing the border, they may have deported you, but that's expeditious removal as a five-year bar. So if you came back, you never could get a green card, but there may be other ways you can do it. 
So I don't know which paper you, they're talking about. Maybe you even uh, text it to Miss uh, Mr. Uh, Juan Carlos. I can look at it, or she can, he can email me later. I can give you a quick response. I do these things pretty fast, and don't worry about charges. Um, but if not, definitely look at why were you subject to 10-year bar. Because if it's a fraud, like for example, you came to America, and the notario at the border, you pay $300 to give you a phony green card. Um, that's a fraud issue. So um, then you need a pardon. If you never come back, if I have a case like that, and I don't have a court of fire relative for the pardon. So uh, it depends on what kind of 10-year bar, then we can give you a better answer. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And this, uh, this question here is, um, sad and is interesting. Um, I will try to complete it here. A man didn't pay me and my brother for one week of work. He closed the door and he didn't open that anymore. And he said that if we keep knocking the door, uh, he was going to call the police or uh, have his dog attack us. Is wait, this wait, wait. That's not fair. You need to go to labor department and push him and push them. I don't know what city or state or report to the police. You can even get a U visa, but some police, they don't want to get involved in labor, especially construction worker job. I would report to a labor department or something, and they couldn't do that to people like us. And that's why a lot of times you can't trust anybody. Uh, if they don't ask for work papers, you don't have to give it to them because remaining quiet doesn't mean you have lied, you know. Uh, I don't necessarily think that represents a general American because right now this is so hard to find good workers that any uh, good person would pay. Um, but I would report him to either hate crime to FBI because uh, or Department of Labor because it doesn't pay you and Labor Department will check into it. If they can do it to you, it's not the first time. Or put a lien, like I know it's so silly for a lawyer, but a lawyer can put a lien on his house or on his property. Um, don't think you're, you're helpless. The American actually, uh, the, the federal people are actually very nice. I mean, I've a lot of experience with them. Or just report to police and see what they'll say. You know, or ask them what could you do, and they're not going to ask you for your status because the police job is to protect the victims. Yeah, and that was actually part of the question. What happens if we call the police? Will it be a problem for us? That's why we didn't call. We don't want to be deported. No, there's no problem because police are fed, a state jurisdiction. FBI and U.S. Department of Labor is federal jurisdiction. Someone didn't pay you is is a civil offense, but the fact that they think we're Mexican, they think you have no papers, they hired us and not pay us. That's that that's not right. You need to report somewhere so we stop doing it for other people. Okay. Thank you so much, Miss Wong, for this answer. Don't forget that the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Um, Bimal Patel, hi, my asylum is pending. I want to bring my fiance uh, to USA. Can... Uh, can she come here on work visa? One of the Subway restaurant owner agreed to provide a sponsor for her. I presume your fiance is from India. If she's from Bangladesh, Pakistan, then she can come on a perm green card in less than three years. But if she's from India, it'll take nine years to come on a work visa. And if you're talking about more the Mexican work visa, the H2A, H2B, uh, Indian American Embassy would never do it. And also, since she's only a fiancé, a girlfriend, on the form, if she applies for a student visa or tourist visa, they would ask, do you intend to work? The answer is no, because uh, she's not supposed to work on those visa. Uh, uh, do you have a visa petition ever filed for you? The answer is no, because you never filed for her, because you yourself is on asylum pending. Do you have any relatives in America? The answer is no, unless her parents are here, because you are only a friend. You're not even married yet, so you're not an immediate relative. You're not a spouse. So maybe apply for student visa, or tourist visa. That's the only way out I see for her. Because on work visa, take, there's no work visa to work 
on a subway restaurant. But if she goes to Canada, it takes only three years. It takes nine months to be a landed and then three years to be a Canadian citizen. And she can come here on a TN visa or on an E visa. So the time frame is a lot shorter in Canada and they are recruiting workers. They're recruiting from the world, the best and the brightest to come to Canada to work. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And I think we have time for one more question. And uh, Vimal Patel, if you have more uh, questions or if you need more information, just please give us a call. 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. And this is an interesting question. I got green card through marriage, got divorced, and now want to get married again. Is that a problem? Absolutely a problem. Absolutely a problem. So they don't, so let's assume I married, I mean, or that person come back to India to marry me. I came to America on a green card. It's good for two years. I filed the 751. I got an approval and I kept my green card. Never, never marry a new wife that you need to sponsor within five years. In fact, don't even marry. Five years from the date of the green card, I would even dare say, don't marry anybody until you become a citizen, but use the five-year test and not the three-year test. Um, and, and, and then once you get a citizenship, marry after maybe two or three months. I got green card through marriage, got divorced, and now want to, oh, no, 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 no. So um, especially if you're from India, Russia, absolutely not, from, or from the Balkans, no. Don't marry until five years after green card. In fact, if I were you, I'd become a citizen first. Once they see it, it's, it's a danger. Worse is if you marry someone from old country, you came to America, you got the green card, no children with that marriage. Now you go back to old country, marry someone else. Now you want to file. No, they're going to investigate that marriage, both marriages, because they can make a lot of money marrying someone. Well, and I've heard that... Um... In the past, I don't know about now, but I've heard that in the past, a lot of Cuban uh, women were... Oh, yes. Oh, Cuban, yes. In the area of Florida, Miami, yeah. uh, they were getting married, getting documents, getting uh, married again, and it was third for marriage, and then... And they were married to Romanians, uh, anybody. But nowadays, that law changed because that person has to be legal entry. So if they marry someone who illegal entry, they couldn't get them green cards anyway. So now those cases are declining. There was a time that, wow, if you marry a Cuban, it's like striking gold. Because immediately you get green card. You don't even need to file the I-130. You don't even need to prove bona fide the relationship. That's how wonderful to be a Cuban is. And that's why a lot of people are upset because they don't think it's fair. Haiti is right next to Cuba. And Haitians don't get no benefits whatsoever. In fact, it's, it's worse now. The Haitians, most of the asylum is denied because they, they're trying to come up from, through the southern border. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for all your answers today. It's been a really awesome show. And we would like to we'll get more uh, information every day that we are uh, having this Q&A session. So thank you so much for uh, each answer, for your knowledge, for sharing what you have lived and your um, experiences. Uh, I don't know if we have time for one more question, Ms. Wong? Yes, I do. Okay, perfect. So, hello, we've been living on, in a lawful presence since 2015. My question is, uh, we had F1 visa when my son going to college, can he restate his visa? No, I'm so sorry. Okay, I got it. So your visa, you came legally with a visa and then you overstayed. You either come on a tourist visa or student visa. You also came with a child who also came with a student visa, tourist visa. In the meantime, you never did an extension or you never went back to school. So when your child who had the F2 visa or the B2 visa, can he get another visa? The answer is no. And I'm very, very sorry about that. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And now uh, it's time to let you go because we know you have a very busy schedule every single day. So thank you so much for your time, for having us, and see you next Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you need more information, don't forget to call the office. The phone number is 216 
Uh, attorney Margaret W. Wong with over 45 years of experience working on the immigration field. 216 279 3984. 216 279 3984.